we have Jack. Jack. I do that in my head every it's time. Okay. Zach Jaskinia. Uh -huh. Nailed it. That's good. That's good. <laughs> um, who is a doctor of chiropractic. Uh, he works at The Source here in Denver. Um, but, you know, when we first met, we had some really cool, fun conversations outside of your typical nutrition and chiropractic conversation. And so I think we'll probably hit on that a little bit today. But first, thanks for being here. Super excited that you're here with us. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun. Cool. Um, he's got a great brain, and I love people with really big brains. It's <laughs> really fun for me. Um, so, as always, we start the show with gratitude. Why? Gratitude can change the world. Literally, it's energetic. It can change your life. It can change your outlook. It can change all of the things uh, in a positive way. Just concentrating on the things that you have in this life that are just big and beautiful, whether it's your dogs, whether mm -hmm. it's your kids, whether it's the fact that you have a toothbrush to brush your teeth every day, whatever it is, there are lots of things to be grateful for. So what are you grateful for? Uh, that's a great question. So I start the day with gratitude. Uh, it's the last thing I do in the shower when, when I'm getting done. Is uh, I'm grateful that I get to, to wake up today to give and to love and to serve mm -hmm. out of abundance uh, with no expectation of anything in return. And to my heart, I'm extremely grateful that my family has their needs met. Yeah, amazing. Yep. Very good. Um, you know, I am, <laughs> I'm going to be super simple. I'm grateful that it's warm outside. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. It's, it was a long winter. It, yeah. Uh -huh. Long, cold, more snowy than usual. Yeah. Uh, so it was uh, It was a bit long. A girl coming from Texas, I still have Texas in me. Mm -hmm. you know, I like the warm weather. So, uh, yeah, I'm glad that we're getting, although it's supposed to drop again tomorrow in snow. Yeah. I have a lot of running to do this weekend, so I'm excited about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know, I think this was still supposed to be a pretty nice weekend, but... Oh, see? Always messing up the techie stuff. There, there we, we go. go. All right. Perfect. <laughs> so, let's jump in and have some fun. Uh, let's first, you know, get a little background. You know, mm. I like to, you know, hear the stories. I think stories are relatable. So people like to know where you come from, why you are what you are, and why you do what you do, what motivates you and what excites you. You've got a lot that you have been doing over the last few years, yep. um, both with chiropractic as well as outside of that. So let's just kind of start there. Yep. Uh, yeah, so I'm a, I'm a hum humble Midwesterner from Kansas. Uh, so I've been in Colorado for just a little over a year, uh, starting at the That's Source right, Chiropractic. Short. Yep. Mm -hmm. so, so I love it here. Yep. Uh, the weather's amazing, even though winter was a little rough. Uh, it's nothing compared to that sleet and ice and the freezing rain of the Midwest. So the wind. Oh my gosh! Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Uh, I'm actually pretty blessed with with where I'm at and the weather that that we've been experiencing over the last year. But uh, for me personally, I um, pretty pretty typical Midwestern lifestyle. Mm -hmm. uh, grew up my mom and my dad. I have two older sisters. Uh, always grew up with pets, so we had lots of energy in our household. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life. I grew up a lot, really, really blue collar. Everyone in my family is blue, blue collar, yeah. which that for some reason didn't resonate with me. Um, and so I had to figure out what that looked like. And so I was actually the first person in my family to, to get a bachelor's degree. Um, and so once I had that, I have a, a bachelor's degree in business and marketing. So, uh, um, that was smart. Yeah, well, <laughs> it was it was pretty much just falling backwards into it. Okay. There wasn't a whole lot of planning that went into it. I just assumed that everything revolves around business, yeah. and so I needed that foundation. Yeah. But little did I know that the school wasn't going to set me up for success. Okay. Um, and that's kind of the issue that, that I see a lot with higher education is they're they're giving you this like uh, abundance of knowledge. Uh, or abundance of education, but maybe not the knowledge background to actually figure out how to use it. And so I was taking accounting classes and economics classes and all these things, and uh, it was useful now, mm -hmm. uh, but when I got out of, of uh, college, I didn't know what to do with it. And so I worked in a cubicle for a couple of years, kind of wasting away. Man. I grew up yeah, playing sports really. my whole life. Mm -hmm. uh, I played college soccer, and so I was always moving, and then all of a sudden, I go from being very active all the time, 98% of, of my day, to now sitting in a cubicle surrounded by people that also 
uh, didn't really enjoy what they were doing, but they didn't know how to get out of it. It kind of brings you down, doesn't it? Totally. It's, yeah. Totally. Cool. And so, that bad energy. Yeah, so I use the analogy of I was a racehorse in a stable. So <laughs> I was used to running and yeah, gunning, and yeah. all of a sudden I was stuck in a stable viewing the world mm -hmm. outside these windows that we mm -hmm. had in our office, but not able to do anything about it in that moment. Yeah. Uh, so fortunately for me, I had this really uh, brilliant friend of mine that I was living with. He played soccer with me um, in Iowa. We came down to Kansas City, and he went to chiropractic school. And then I just went, came home one day and was like, I need something, mm -hmm. so tell me about chiropractic. Yeah. And that was kind of it. So we talked for like five hours straight. He's like, wow, you seem really, really interested in this. It's, you might explore it. And then I just didn't put another thought into it, applied. Yeah. Yeah. I was tentatively accepted, uh, got into chiropractic school, and to be transparent, failed pretty hard to start with. Oh. Uh, I have a business background, mm -hmm. never once stepped into science yeah. vernacular at all, yeah. um, and didn't know what I got myself into. Mm -hmm. So a typical four-year program took me five, mm -hmm. because the first year was rough. Like yeah. I remember calling my mom and saying, this is I'm just terrible at this. I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know what I got myself into. And she just told me the words that will stick with me forever is that if, if it's easy, everybody would do it. It's so true. You know, it's interesting, not to interrupt, but I just I think it's so interesting that so many people who go into the science world, that's just who they were growing up. That's who I've been yeah. growing up. It's yeah. just what I loved and what I gravitated to. Um, and interesting that that was not yeah you were just of course you're the sports guy you sort of on the outside you yeah. know in but yeah yeah, yeah so i mean I, I stepped into 600 level biology courses uh yeah. kinesiology courses yeah. where i was surrounded by you know 99 percent of the student population are science mm -hmm. nerds mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and then i had to become that science yeah. nerd and so yeah. i was going through the classes and couldn't really pick it up because it was just moving so fast mm -hmm. they just assumed that i already knew all yeah. all the background foundational information to pick up this advanced stuff and I, I wasn't able to do that and so I had I had to leave the class like in between classes I would study and you know watching YouTube videos and going to the library spending all my time mm -hmm. trying to learn the basics so that mm -hmm. then I could apply it to this big stuff that I was mm -hmm. learning so it was it was a lot it was yeah. a lot and and uh, you know I, I stick by that adage of if it, if it was easy everybody would do it because that's why I like doing hard things now I, I have to push myself I have to see what I'm capable of not only for myself but I have three kids, mm -hmm. uh, and so I want my son, uh, who's five, who watches everything that I do, mm -hmm. I want him to see that I'm willing to do hard things yep. because there's always something yeah. at the end of that. Yep. And life is not the destination, it's the journey. Mm -hmm. And so my journey is uh, you know, putting myself into relatively uncomfortable situations. Like, I've never been on a radio station before, <laughs> but you know, you're doing it, and you just like kind of have Here to it accept is. it and uh, move through it. Uh, but I'm, I always learn something more about myself after I do those things. And then there's always some payoff. Yeah. I get a, an increased level in confidence mm -hmm. or certainty, or I just feel happier after doing it. Like I do cold plunges every morning and that is not comfortable first thing in the morning. Like in the bath or what? I have a, I, I bought a portable ice bath really? for my back, yeah, for my back porch and you know, depending upon how, what the external temperature is, that will kind of determine what it is on the, in, uh, like in yeah. the water. Yeah. Uh, but I can s totally submerge myself in the water and it's not comfortable. It's no. the last thing I want to do when I'm, the, when I'm getting out from being warm in my sheets to then mm. jumping in an ice bath, that's not comfortable. But then I get out and I'm like, oh, I'm glad I did that. Wow. Because you, you just noticed the, <sighs> the neurologic shift. Yeah, so, no, that's... Things like that. That's amazing. Um, <laughs> I can't imagine doing it every day. I try to do it in my shower. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I just need to suck it up. And yeah, yeah. Because I know it's good. Yeah. But you got you to gotta suck it up and just yeah. stop being a puss. A bit, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm uh, bless, bless my wife is... Uh, she has to live with me, and so she gets to see this kind of crazy stuff yeah. that I that I'm willing to do. And so she's she's starting to experiment cool. with it too, and Good. she's starting to notice a big benefit. And yeah. you know, that's kind of how it happens: is you just have to expose yourself to it, mm -hmm. have faith that whatever you're going to get out of it is probably mm -hmm. going to be something that you're going to need anyways, and that it's just a, a an opportunity for us to learn and grow and evolve and expand to, uh, to who we are. Well, and it's true, and that's something that we talk about on the show yeah. a lot because. If we don't have struggles, if we don't have, you know, jump into the uncomfortable, right? We don't grow. Yep. And like you said, you know, life is the journey. We have to use every situation 
and usually it's the uncomfortable, terrible, sucky, shitty situations that yep. are like, okay, now I'm this person because of it and I'm better for it. Totally, mm -hmm. totally, yep. Yeah. So, so, you know, after I got out of chiropractic school, I felt like I could do anything. Because that, yeah. I mean, once I, got, once I got past like the basic sciences part, which is like the first two years, and I'm going through board exams, and I'm making it to clinicals, and I start to succeed because that's, that becomes that mm -hmm. athlete comes mm -hmm. back out of me, yeah. where I can apply all of those physical, mental tools to my craft that I'm learning, mm -hmm. um, and then I just start to thrive that by the time I'm, I'm out, you know, I, I had battled some depression while I was mm -hmm. in that corporate world that then it carried into chiropractic school, which made my situation even worse. Yeah. But then once I got out, I was like, okay, all right, we've, we've reached a new level mm -hmm. of being at this point, so now let's just see where we go. So I started my practice in Kansas City, a chiropractic office, um, in March 1st of 2020. Woo. So like the absolute worst possible time to start a business, and I felt every bit of it. I slugged it out for two years, um, you know, met some amazing people, um, people that trusted me with their care, just to, as a fresh, mm -hmm. freshie coming out of chiropractic mm -hmm. school. Um, and so I'm extremely grateful for all those people that allowed uh, and gave me the, the freedom and the space to just like help them get through what they needed to get through. Yeah. But then I, I recognized that I needed to change. Mm -hmm. um, and I looked forward five years into the future and was like, well, I don't, I, I don't really like what I'm building because it just wasn't what I, uh, the vision I had had for myself in a chiropractic office. And so then, you know, uh, Dr. Darren Murphy uh, is, a, is the, the owner of chiropractic at uh, the Source Chiropractic. And, you know, he and I had trained together in chiropractic school. Okay. And I just went in to shadow his office one day and I just had this like feeling in my gut. Mm. This, my intuition said, follow it. Yeah. And then I had to figure out how to get there. <laughs> so it's yeah. always the thing, right? I had I still had to slug it out for another year in Kansas City and mm -hmm. do the best I could, knowing that I was leaving, which was really challenging. Yeah. Um, but once I got here, then it was okay. Be okay doing all the uncomfortable things because you keep growing and you keep mm -hmm. getting a little bit better every single day, and that's how I'm here today. So I want to back up for a minute because I have a question for you, if if you don't mind. Um, talking about it a little bit, you said you battled with some depression while mm -hmm. you were in corporate America and then mm -hmm. in, through school. We are in a in a, a a place as a society where there's so much depression, so much anxiety, yep. and there there are many many factors that go along with with you know I guess it's the underlying factors that go along with it and, and the whys and then you know all the social connection or lack thereof and all of these things. Yep. So I'm I'm curious if that was your battle, if, if you think it was specifically because you weren't doing what you were meant to do, or I don't, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I think I want to speak to people who are dealing with this, when you get out of it without the drugs, without, without the, yep. the medications, what is it that you did to kind of pull yourself out of that? Yeah, great question. Um, and, I, and I do think, this is, this is some of the people that I speak to at, at the office, is, is just become a magnet for me, is these people that are at a lower vibrational state, but their, yeah. their aim is to be um, living a more fulfilled life. And so for me, my story is a little bit different because I dealt with, um, you know, my parents got divorced at an early age. I was kind of uh, stuck in limbo a little bit. Didn't really know what I was gonna do. Uh, drank a little bit too much in high school. Uh, then the same thing in college. And then when I was in college, my mom had a bad accident. Um, really bad, like traumatic, mm -hmm. um, which I don't really need to get into, but mm -hmm. it, but it messed me up. Mm -hmm. um, and I was, so I was living with her at the time in Kansas City, and then I moved to Sioux City, Iowa to go to college, and something happened to her while I was gone. Oh. And so I took that personally. Yeah. Um, I, I carried that on my heart, mm -hmm. like uh, it was just a gash was open, mm -hmm. um, and I had nothing, nothing, no, no skills mm -hmm. to start to put that back together. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so that's where in college, it just kind of, more gasoline was put on the fire mm -hmm. and it just kept burning and burning and burning and burning. Um, and then I got out of college, continued with a corporate life, kept burning and burning. You know, I was hanging around great people because the guy I was telling you about that I lived with that was in chiropractic school, mm -hmm. he would bring all of his chiropractic friends over. Mm -hmm. You know, he was adjusting me and little, he didn't know this at the time, but he like, he saved me for who I was at that point. Yeah. 
Um, and you know, uh, you know, he'll he'll call me a big baby when I when I talk about that. But <laughs> but like I was going through such like a rough yeah. patch that I needed a light yeah. switch moment, yeah. and that's that's something that I aim for with my people now because mm -hmm. I know that's possible because yep. I've seen it personally. Yep. Um, and having that experience of just slowly starting to pull myself out. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I use I use these visuals like digging a hole. Yeah. I dug a pretty big hole for myself. You know, financially, personally, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, dug a pretty big hole because mm -hmm. I just like blocked it all out. Yep. Um, that as I started to dig and started to pull myself out, I started to recognize what I'm capable of, and so that's why I like doing those hard things because I made it through that. Mm -hmm. I can most assuredly make it through. Um, and so, you know, without the medication, I, I never even spoke to anybody about mm -hmm. it. I didn't even tell my family about mm -hmm. it. They just like noticed that I wasn't quite the same like bubbly personality. That was the life of the of the room and like yeah. super uh, living in joy. That's the way I was as a kid. Um, and then this thing happened and it just like dimmed the light. Mm -hmm. um, and so I read everything I possibly could, listened to as many podcasts as I possibly could about people that had gone through a similar experience that I had. Mm -hmm. And they had a multitude of ways of pulling themselves out. It wasn't just like a one size fits all. Yes, you have to use chiropractic. Yes, you have to use nutrition. Yes, you have to use mindset training. Yes, you have to use uh, whatever it is. Uh, and what I noticed was all I have to do is figure out what I, what I want to be and who I'm supposed to be mm -hmm. and figure out why. Mm -hmm. And then once I found those things and I answered those questions, I, just, I kept getting these like universal drop-ins that, yeah, the chiropractic thing is probably what you need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this this thing, the cold plunging is probably what you need. Yeah, you know, I'm doing a 100-mile race in September. Yeah. And if you ask me today if I can run 100 miles, no. <laughs> but I have six months to do it, yeah. and um, I, I know that that's what I need because I need consistency. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I grew up with, you know, going to practices and things like that, and I need the consistent input on a daily basis. And so that's that's part of what my message mm -hmm. now with people is your input matches your output. Yeah. So if you visualize what your output, what you want to be doing in your life, uh, whether that's uh, you want to be in a specific career, you want to do an athletic endeavor, you want to uh, be in this certain relationship, you want to be this particular person, that's your output. Mm -hmm. That's that's the vision, that's the goal, that's the aspiration. But then what is the input that's, that's needed to match that output, yeah. and the, the bigger the output, mm -hmm. the bigger the input. Right. And you have to you have to own that. Yeah. You have to be willing to go there and trust the process and have faith in what you're capable of, so that you can show the fuck up and do the hard things yep. that it's going to take to mm -hmm. do that thing. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, I I love that, and I love you know it's I think so often it can be hard to you know when you're stuck in that hole, right? Yeah. It's hard to kind of start to find your way out and one of the th another thing that we talk about a lot is you know surrounding yourself with people who are there to help build you you know yep. it's why we do this show it's why I want to introduce people like you to other people yep. um it's it is it is surrounding yourself with the people who are there to build you up yep. um and then you do the same and you build others up and yep. you know without your team whatever that looks like um it's hard to do things on your own yep. um that, that's why I'm here. Mm -hmm. That's why yeah. I'm in Denver. Because yeah. I had a solo chiropractic office. Mm -hmm. No no front desk staff. No oh, one. So, yeah. I mean, I was grinding. Mm -hmm. I had to bring all the energy to the space. Yeah. I had everything. And that's not that wasn't fun for me. Uh, mm -hmm. Because I had lost, uh, you know, there's a, there's a saying that if, if you want to go, go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Mm -hmm. And... I didn't. I was done going fast. Yeah. Because it fast meant that I made mistakes. Mm -hmm. I wasn't showing up the way that I needed to, because I was just living fast and loose. Yeah. And that I was, I was, if I wanted to mature into the person that I needed to be, I needed to just surround myself with people that were in a team mentality. Like at the Source Chiropractic, mm -hmm. we we're we're pushing. We're gonna have five chiropractors. We have two front desk nice. staff. We we have a lot of energy coming yeah. in, and so we mm -hmm. have to work together. We have to communicate. We have to do things. Uh, for each other, do things with each other. We have to be okay doing the hard things, doing the screenings on a Saturday when mm -hmm. you'd rather just sit at home. <laughs> but, but I mean, that's how bi that's yeah. business, you know. Yeah. And so I'm very particular about who I spend my time with, mm -hmm. what I spend my time doing, um, and why I'm doing it. Yeah. Um, and you know, I it's because I've been there. I've been to the place where mm -hmm. 
nobody wants to go, that you know, nobody would ever dream of being, it's fucking hard to get yourself out. Yeah. So as I've gotten myself out, I'm yeah. like, okay, well, I see who's in it with me. Mm -hmm. I see who my squad is. I see who, mm -hmm. who my who the people are that I can count on that are accountable not only for themselves, but they can also be accountable for me mm -hmm. um, and they can show up for me. And, um, you know, that's, I think it's, it's important to surround yourself with team. And, you know, we don't have any family here in Denver. Uh, but for me personally, I needed, I needed to, to show myself what I'm capable of. Yeah. And that meant do it alone. Like you gotta be on your own, mm -hmm. figure out who, mm -hmm. who it's gonna take, what it's gonna take. And yep. number one, why is it so important to you? Agreed. Agreed. All right. So in practice, um, who is it that you like to work with? And then the, the question I think behind that is, what are you seeing? What are you seeing as far as, and this is, I, so I'm just going to say it, as far as the declining health, yeah. declining health care, what are you seeing in practice? So uh, first question, who I love seeing. So my ideal clientele I don't use the word patient because that's that means a person who suffers and I don't I don't like to use that yeah. word so we, we try not to use that word so cool. uh, practice members or clients or something yeah, yeah. Uh, but my person that I love having in the office is a f uh, young family mm -hmm. like myself like mm -hmm. we have three young kids under the age of five uh, and so I, I love those people are in the fire yeah when you have young children you are yeah. in the fire and I, I want to support those people um, athletes, I'm, I told you I'm doing this 100 mile race. I love working with athletes. Um, I, I'm starting to, to learn how to become a better athlete myself. I played college soccer, but I had no freaking clue what I was doing. Yeah. yeah like literally no clue. Uh, and so now that I'm learning more, I'm like, oh, dang, I'm better now than I was back then. Um, I love working with kind of people that we were talking about before, people that just need a spark, yep. need that light bulb mm -hmm. moment, mm -hmm. uh, because they're the people that if they – like I give them, my goal is that I give them hope if they give me faith. Mm -hmm. So, I like so mm -hmm. I, I need them to have faith in what we're talking about, mm -hmm. trust what I'm saying, mm -hmm. and I will continue to show up for them so that I can bring them hope. Yeah. Um, and we, I've started to attract all of those different subsets. Mm -hmm. um, and, but the other question is really important because there's two different sides to healthcare. There's natural and unnatural. Mm -hmm. And so um, one thing that I've noticed a lot is that the people that come in and, um, you know, we score people, we take them through a full full intake process where we score it all out subjectively, objectively, and we score it all out, all out, zero to 100. The higher the number, the better. So if somebody scores in like the 80 to 100 range, they just need a little bit of optimization. Mm -hmm. But if somebody's coming in and they're like 75, 70, 65, they've let things go yeah. and that's not disrespectful in the sense that like they haven't been doing the right things but maybe they haven't been exposed they or, or, been, or yeah. been given the mm -hmm. right information to help them mm -hmm. get to where they want to be and so um, those people are usually the ones that have been trapped in medicine mm -hmm. um, they're dealing with low back pain due to some type of stressor that led to dysfunction that then caused pain well and just to interrupt real quick yep. this it, is that's that's what we tend to see is you you have this whatever it is but then you've got the the spiral and things tend to spiral and and if we don't know how to address it immediately then that's what we see yep. in most cases you're not going to start to heal or repair yep. on your own things are going to spiral yeah and so like like you said you know it's it's exposure which is partly why we do this but exposure and getting the word out about how important biomechanics is mm. because we talk about uh, we talk about the brain, we talk about the gut, we talk about all these things, but it all has to work together. Yep. Everything has to work together. So yep. anyway. Yeah, totally, ahead. totally. Yep. And, and that's a great point. And a lot of what, like life is built on momentum, mm -hmm. whether it's forward momentum or backward momentum. Mm -hmm. And so I view health from a momentum standpoint is natural allows you to build forward momentum. Mm -hmm. Unnatural leads you away from that and takes you in a negative momentum. Yeah. And so what I mean by that is if somebody comes into us and they're a 25 something year old and they've done a lot of physical labor, they, they maybe they work out and they lift heavy or uh, they're in a physically demanding job or they sit too much mm -hmm. and they have back pain and they come to us immediately, they're, they're opening themselves up to a completely new world. And why is because they're not, they're automatically starting 
th at this point coming in, and we're taking him directly into forward momentum. Mm -hmm. Because we're not just doing chiropractic, we're talking about healthy movement strategies, yeah. we're talking about, like if they need nutritional advice, we'll, we'll get some really basic sure. stuff. Like mm -hmm. we try not to overcomplicate things, because mm -hmm. I think that's what happens in healthcare now, yeah. is that we've completely diluted and this is something that we were talking about earlier, but we've completely diluted the human experience down to, yeah, you're feeling this thing, you need this thing. Um, or uh, we have to take you through, uh, you know, this whole medical process of mm -hmm. seeing, uh, you know, a renal specialist, seeing a liver specialist, seeing a heart specialist, seeing this thing, this thing, this thing, this thing. Compartmentalizing. Yeah. You compartmentalize when it doesn't make sense to compartmentalize. No, mm -hmm. no, we're fragmenting the human yeah. experience. Right. And so, um, you know, for us, we, we take a 20,000 foot view. Mm -hmm. We say, okay, number one, if you're that 25 year old something, you're gonna pick up the information that we're giving you easier because you haven't been stuck in the mud for that long. Mm -hmm. Versus the opposite end of that is like the 45 to 50 year old person that they were that 25 year old that had some mild low back pain, but then you add 20 years of yeah. negative momentum into that. And now depending upon where they go from here is gonna determine if they can get things back on track or they're only adding fuel to the fire. Right. And so if they meet us, maybe they come in and they're you know, 45, 50 years old and they've been dealing with some type of chronic low back pain, they've been popping ibuprofen or Tylenol or uh, Excedrin for headaches or something like that, but they're noticing that they keep having to take it, mm -hmm. then they're only making the situation worse. Yeah. Because the body, pain, we use the acronym of pay attention inside now. Mm. So pain is there as a signal to tell you it's time to do something about this. Yeah. But if we continue to shut that message off because it's annoying or it's, um, you know, it, uh, we don't have time for it, we have this big deadline, we can't think about the fact that we have low back pain, we just suppress the message and keep making it worse. Right. Because when you don't feel it, you won't heal it. Mm -hmm. and, and so as they start the process of opening their system up and waking up to uh, you know, maybe some of the dysfunction that they've been living with for a while, then they have, then they have all these multitude of questions that also come up yeah. is, okay, what, do, what is my, the relationships around me look like? Mm -hmm. What do, um, how, how is my patience level with my kids? How is my nutrition? Mm -hmm. What are the thoughts that are going through my head? Um, and as you start to fine tune that, because that's all questions that I've had for myself, and I'm sure you went yep. through that process yep. when, in your younger mm -hmm. days mm -hmm. of like, still do, like still, mm -hmm. still like, am I doing the things that I need yep. to do to show up to be the person that I need to be? Yep. Um, and as you answer those questions, and you're still willing to show up for yourself, you just start to get better. You start mm -hmm. to get healthier, mm -hmm. um, and so that's why I say have faith in us, have faith in, in our process, yep. and we'll give you hope yep. so that you can keep showing up. You can keep doing the hard things, you know, even though uh, it might be challenging to come into the office sometimes because, you know, it's a love-hate relationship with a chiropractor. We have to find the stuck stuff. Yep. We have to find the stuff that's painful. We have to yep. find the stuff that you're not willing mm -hmm. to let go of, mm -hmm. and we got to move it. Yep. And so once we move it, then you can, you'll have, like, another fork in the road. Okay, do I keep moving it and, it, and I actually heal it, or do I not... I'm not able to let go of that yet, or I'm not mm -hmm. willing to release it, or um, relinquish this ability to control that little bit of my life, mm -hmm. and it continues to store in your nervous system. Yeah. So if they make the choice to heal through it, mm -hmm. and they're like, "Damn, this like, I thought it was just, I thought my neck was just hurting because it was poor sleep that I was having, but it was really because I've been allowing this like dysfunctional." Yes. painful relationship into my life yep. and because I was steering myself so far away from the person mm -hmm. that I want to be now it keeps coming back it's so true and it goes back to you know how everything is so connected yep. the mental the emotional the physical the spiritual the financial the relational everything is connected and can express as uh, more mental and emotional it can express as physical pain it can you know all of these things so making sure that you're you know, taking that step back and, and like you said, taking, you know, that, that view on your own life because it may not be that it's just a pain in your neck, yeah, right? right. There's, there could be something is creating that right. pain in your neck. Yep. I want to also, I think this is really important to say because we, we live in a world where ibuprofen is candy mm -hmm. and you had hit, you hit on this a few minutes ago. Um, but it's, but we're also now living in a world where fertility rates are 
through the floor mm -hmm. for both men and women. Yep. So testosterone levels are dropping, uh, uh, sperm counts are dropping, motility is is in the tank. Ibuprofen can decrease sperm count, like I can't remember the number mm. now, but significantly. Mm. It's so interesting that we're sitting in a place where we have so many factors that can interfere. Yep. You know, it's the endocrine disruptors, right? It's it's the toxicities, it's the emotional, you know, yep. dysfunction, all of these things. Yep. And then on top of it, popping ibuprofen like it's candy. So I, I, I feel the need to hit on that. You know, I'm, you know, working on, you know, launching soulful, or I have launched soulful conception. And so these little tidbits come up when I'm talking to people about their their you know why they might be struggling with their fertility yep. this is this is it's this is huge yep. and it manifests in many many different ways yeah yep. yeah and you know we we get a ton of infertility in our office a ton mm -hmm. and the part of the nervous system that controls your sexual organs is your lower back yeah and if we're sitting all day if we're not moving our bodies if we're not breathing uh, mm -hmm. Effectively and with our with our diaphragm and uh, we're your shoulders. That's yeah, how I breathe. Yeah, we're stuck. Yeah. You're better. You're better than you think. <laughs> uh, but if we're if we're stuck in a sympathetic dominant state, mm -hmm. our bodies aren't don't have the capacity to rear children. That's just the way it is. We have mm -hmm. more stress present in our external environments than we've ever had before, and that's leading to more stress internally than we've ever had before. Because yep. uh, you know the external world is our mirror. And if we're not paying attention, mm -hmm. we're walking around super stressed out, we're not getting enough sleep, um, we're irritable, we're impatient, uh, we're probably living in pain, and like you mentioned, we're popping some type of pill, yeah. and God knows what those chemicals do to our body, st yeah. we're starting to figure that out. Mm -hmm. But our conversation is, let's start with getting your spine healthy. Yeah. Let's start with reconnecting your brain back to the tissues that cause mm -hmm. uh, fertility and infertility, if yeah. it's not uh, expressing the way that it's supposed to, but it goes back to what we were just talking about is as you start to wake the system mm -hmm. up, not only does that give you a greater capacity to rear children or get pregnant, but it also allows you to figure out for yourself whether that's something that you're ready for mm -hmm. and, so, and, and how do you support that. Yeah. So we support it through movement. We support it through healthy uh, nutrition choices, which uh, you know, I'm sure you, you talk about ad nauseum mm -hmm. to people all day, every day, <laughs> yeah. is, is literally just stop putting trash in your body. Mm -hmm. um, and it, you know, input matches your output. If you yeah, want to have children, yeah. you have to create the right input that allows you to the space and capacity to actually have children. Because it's, yeah. a, it's an amazing, beautiful, natural process. Mm -hmm. But if we're not doing what we need to do on a daily basis to show up the way that we need to, to become that parent, mm -hmm. to become uh, the partner that we need to be, maybe we're not ready to have kids in the first place. And there might be a reason spiritually why that hasn't quite happened yet. Well, and I totally agree, and this, this is, you know, maybe a good place to do a little plug on soulful conception, but if, if your body, it, your body's going to tell you, your body's going to tell you, and there, there's a reason for it, and that's the thing to, to, to really pay attention to is, you know, things don't happen just because, right? right? Things happen because there's something deeper, and that's the goal of, of my job, it's the goal of your job, is to dig as deep as you can to understand what is what the root cause is. And there are, are likely multiple root causes. Yep. But really digging in to understand what the root cause is, what's, what has the body moving away from what your goal might be, yep. but it's like, I can't take it, I yep. can't handle it, I don't have the time yep. for it. And everything that's in our environment, everything that's from our thoughts, to, to where we live, to what's in the home, to what we use to clean our home, to what yep. we put on our body, to having accidents and, and our uh, biomechanics being completely a mess, or having uh, just being birthed, right? Being birthed and babies, you know, they can have their biomechanics completely mm -hmm. a mess, mm -hmm. <laughs> for lack of a yep. better word, just through coming through the birth canal. And the way that they're pulled, yeah. And so much—I mean, so much of this is just—it's amazing, yeah. And can affect us for an entire life. And, and why why we do what we do, why we adjust the spine, is because it's the easiest way of accessing your nervous system. Mm -hmm. So your nervous system is your brain connected to your spinal cord, and then there's spinal nerves that come out from there that controls all the tissues in your body, your organs, your muscles, your cells, literally everything under your cap. And I think of all these different systems as programs. 
in our, in our nervous system as the electrical uh, hardware. It's the computer system. And your digestion, your cardiovascular system, your, um, you know, your uh, sexual organs, mm -hmm. your reproductive system, uh, musculoskeletal system, those are all programs. Mm -hmm. And we have to support the programs. Yep. It, if it's not, if we're, you know, the inability to have a child is no different, in my opinion, than somebody that doesn't feel like they can run a 5K. Mm -hmm. Because it's a program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of them is dealing with your musculoskeletal system. One of them is dealing with your reproductive system. Yep. If you can't run a 5K, you got to find a way to support that. Mm -hmm. You have to put the, get movement in. Yep. You have to properly, yep. like, uh, get the nutrition in. You have to run. Mm -hmm. Like, with if reproductive system is, is, you know, there's some chemical things that go on in there. But, you know, we have to find ways to support that. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that the ways that we support that is through unnatural causes, right. unnatural uh, remedies, I should say. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, I, I've dealt with, uh, or I've experienced patients or clients in our office that have used herbs, that have used mm -hmm. supplements, that have used things, but the more natural they get, the more uh, nature-based remedies they use, the higher likelihood they have mm -hmm. of changing that infertility stamp that somebody put on your head into uh, fertility and then you just like live your life from there yeah yeah and in so much of it too we you know we live in this place where it's the I've got to have this happen I've got to have it right now yep. which then changes like you said the nervous system into that sympathetic into that fight or flight yep. into the body you know all of the blood moves away from the core so you're not supporting digestion you're certainly not supporting uh, you know, your your sexual organs and the ability then to support a pregnancy if all of your blood is at your extremities because it feels like you're <laughs> right. having to run. Yeah, that's a, that's a great right? point. Yeah. yeah, that's a great point. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if it is, it's it's you, it's a it's a infertility or struggling with fertility is just not just. I don't mean it that way, but it's a symptom. Yeah. It's a symptom. Totally. And so much of what we deal with in our world are symptoms or clusters of symptoms. You know, diseases right. are clusters of symptoms. And it's the body talking to us, yeah. right? And we gotta t we gotta take that step back and say, I need the body's the, you know it's knocking on the door going, hey, I need you to tell me, I need you to help to support me. I can't yeah. do this on my own anymore because it tries, it just keeps working for us and yeah. keeps working for us until 100%. it just can't, you know. Well, and, and I think one of the reason one of the things that that women experience, particularly in this in this infertility process, is somebody rubber stamps you as mm -hmm. yep. hashtag infertility, yep, yep. infertile, and that puts you in a box. Mm -hmm. um, and now you've already started this sympathetic storm. Now we're just the same thing, adding mm -hmm. fuel to the fire. Yep. Um, and so there's a lot of guilt. There's a lot of shame. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of, Such a uh, shame. Yeah, there's, mm -hmm. you know, and they put people on these unnatural remedies to help them become more fertile. Mm -hmm. But when it doesn't work, what do we do? We shame the mother as there's something else. Maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe you were just born with the inability mm -hmm. to rear children. Mm -hmm. That's bullshit, in my opinion. Yeah, that's yeah. just that's just that's just passing the buck mm -hmm. uh, from the provider onto the person. Well, and we see that a lot. I think that totally, can happen a lot. Totally, yeah, and, and so you know, I, I think for, mm -hmm. for us, what what we're what we're selling is not healthcare. It's not chiropractic. It's hope. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what you walk in the door with. You can you can come in with chronic headaches for the last twenty years and get one adjustment, get a good night's sleep, and you never have headaches again. We've had cases like that. Yeah. We've had women that have had miscarriages in the past, women that have been unable to have children that come into our office and within six months of care, they're having children. Mm -hmm. We have, we're, we're having like a baby explosion in our office right now. Amazing. We just have, we just have babies coming left mm -hmm. and right. Love it. Uh, but it's, it's not us doing it. Mm -hmm. We're just providing, we're just, we're just facilitating a healing process. We're removing yeah. interference from mm -hmm. the nervous system, allowing the body to do what it does naturally. Uh, and it's the woman, it's the it's that person that's healing whatever it is that they walked in the door with. It's their physical body healing that, as long as they provide mm -hmm. it with the right uh, stimuli. Um, and we can celebrate that. We have a we have a we have a healing bell in our office that if people oh, if people have I like an amazing it. response, mm -hmm. like uh, no headaches or we just had a baby or whatever it is, we're like we hand them the bell and they can ring the shit out of the bell. <laughs> That's exciting <laughs> for us. That. Like we'll beat on the tables yeah, yeah, and we'll yeah. get really excited for them because mm -hmm. we celebrate wins. Mm -hmm. We don't we don't attach we don't diagnose anything in our office. Right. We don't right. we don't attach labels mm -hmm. uh, because that just suppresses people's life experience mm -hmm. and, and their own exponential potential that rests within them. Uh, we just 
All we do is we provide chiropractic care. And then their body shows up for them exactly the way that it's supposed to, and we celebrate the wins and we keep moving. Yeah, I love that. So good. So let's, let's t- talk a little bit more about, um, I think, healthcare as, as a whole. And I, I want to I hit on this a bit because of the conversation that we had in your office and where this conversation could go in time as far as as what we're seeing, um, you know, we're, we're a sick country, we're a sick nation, um, we, um, <coughs> we are, in my opinion, <coughs> duped a lot of the times yep. by, by what, what has, you know, historically been called science, um, and I don't know, you know, I kind of got away from using the word science because, you know, I, I like evidence-based a little bit better. Yep. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. Yeah, and so you know we we're in a place where there's a it, it, there's it's confusion, it's frustration. What's right? What's wrong? How do we know what's right and what's wrong? How do we know who to listen to? Because I think that those that we've been listening to in in large <coughs> part over the last couple of years, um, how do I say this politely and lightly? Mm-hmm. Um, it's we have gone down a really bad road. Uh-huh. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah, we're not trusting so, nature. We're not trusting nature anymore. Right. Um, I'll use I'll use blood pressure for Kay. as an mm-hmm. example. Mm-hmm. Um, it's very common that people are on blood pressure medication. Now. Yep. It's not normal. It's common. Um, and so, understanding like the mechanism of how of of what blood pressure medication's purpose is and how it works, I think can help people understand why that might not be the appropriate route to take. And so, like it. You know, you don't. Ju- you're not born with high blood pressure. Um, you know, there's some. There's some maybe external, maybe potentially internal cause mm-hmm. of why you're experiencing high blood pressure. But depending on who you go to, you're going to have a completely drastic different, oh, yeah. different uh, healing response to mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, if you go the normal traditional medical route, um, you know they take they take your your biomarkers, your di- your diagnostics, mm-hmm. and they say, well, yeah, you have high blood pressure. Well, number one, they keep raising the standards of high blood pressure in this country uh, because people are eating so terribly mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. Uh, and, and living a sedentary lifestyle that yep. it makes them more uh, susceptible to having hypertension or high blood pressure. And if somebody were to say, okay, you have high blood pressure, and that's becoming normal. No, it's not. It's becoming more common. It's becoming more common. This is all you have to take. We've had great results with people mm-hmm. that take this thing for high blood pressure. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, thank God. So you're relinquishing your personal sovereignty onto yes. this pill, this, yes. this medical provider mm-hmm. to fix you. Um, that's the first issue. Number two would be, well, that, that blood pressure medication is not, not healing why you have high blood pressure in the first place. It's only lowering your biomarkers so that when they test you again, you're like, yeah, of course, look, your blood pressure is lower. You're all better now. Yeah, but that's not, that's not how the human body works. Yeah. Uh, you know, and so the reason, the why behind your, your high blood pressure it's not because you're missing the synthetic chemicals from a pharmaceutical mm-hmm. drug. Mm-hmm. The reason that you have high blood pressure is because you're not eating well, you're not exercising, maybe you're living in that sympathetic dominant state, yeah. and so your your resting heart rate is much mm-hmm. higher than it should be, and then you get tested and they're like, yeah, you have high blood pressure. But if you were to take into Which, account- Which, by the way, is super dynamic. Yeah. The body is so dynamic, it can go up, it can go down. It's yeah. the same with cholesterol, it's all over the place anyway. It's yeah. just, it's yeah, go ahead. Yeah, and, and so what, what people notice is, you know, they start off with just having high blood pressure, but maybe maybe when they go this medical route, it dovetails into all these other diagnoses down the road. Mm-hmm. Because when you're not healing why um, that is there in the first place, it's just going to pick up momentum. Yep. It's the same thing yeah, we were just talking spiral. about. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. it's spiral, you know, mm-hmm. And so you're picking up all this negative momentum because you're, not, you're no longer experiencing high blood pressure. Uh, from a diagnostic standpoint, but it's still going on inside you. That process is still going on and it keeps getting worse yeah. and worse and worse and worse mm-hmm. and worse so that you can start with high blood pressure medication at 25, maybe because you just drank a Red Bull and then you went into the doctor's office feeling anxious uh, and, and you know all out of sorts. And then by 45, now you've got all these metabolic issues, yeah. uh, you know, metabolic disease. Mm-hmm. So uh, uh, there's... 40% of this country has some type of chronic illness, at least one. 80, or I'm sorry, 80% have at least one. 40% have two or more. Yeah. And so, you know, back going back a couple of years, the people that get sick, and this is just goes back millennium, the people that get sick are the people that have uh, lower lifestyle, 
like uh, reduced lifestyle factors. Mm -hmm. So uh, they're not doing the things that they should do to support yeah. a healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And why that happens, why they get sick is because it, it lowers your immune response. Mm -hmm. And so when you get a lowered immune response, now you start to notice that you're feeling a little groggy, you're not sleeping well, it's picking up mm -hmm. momentum. Mm -hmm. And then you just feel crappy, you have to miss work one day, and then you go to the doctor and they diagnose you with something, and you're like, well, maybe one day it's, it's the C word, maybe the another mm -hmm. day it's flu, maybe another day it's this thing or this thing or this thing or this thing, and they just keep putting this stuff on it so that they can give you that pharmaceutical drug. Yeah. But if you were to take a step back and you're like, well, maybe I feel like shit because I, I, my kids haven't been sleeping well and I've been uh, you know, only getting three or four hours mm -hmm. of good nights of sleep mm -hmm. and maybe I'm feeling extra stress from work or I'm not uh, you know, eating the right foods. I keep stopping at uh, a local gas station yeah. to get a quick pick-me-up yeah. or whatever that is mm -hmm. and you're building momentum yeah. in the wrong direction. Yeah. So I think just that very simple concept mm -hmm. of, well, what are, you, what are you exposing your body to? Mm -hmm. What are you putting in your body? And I think the more we can just like remove medicine from our lifestyle, the better off all of mm -hmm. humanity will be. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. And I think that, that, you know, what, you know, when we start to feel bad and we go to our doctor and they say, okay, well, this is what you have. So for one, kind of going back to you, you're now labeled, yep. but for two, you may have it. You may have this cluster of symptoms, but it doesn't tell you why. Right. It's not, they're not really you know, it's a diagnosis, sure. Does it make you feel better? I don't know. You know, does it? I, <laughs> I would think not necessarily, but some people feel relief. Well, well that, now that, that's I know that's where the placebo effect me. comes in. Right, you know? right, exactly. This thing, this pill gives you hope. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. but what's, what's going on is yeah. that, it, like, from a biomechanical standpoint, mm -hmm. it's not helping you. Right. It's just yeah. tricking your brain yeah. into thinking that yeah. way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we, you know, it's, I, this is a simple one, but, you know, depression isn't a lack of Prozac, right? Right, totally. <laughs> there's, there's so much more to it. But yeah. what, what we need to start to retrain ourselves to do is, okay, I have this cluster of symptoms or I have this diagnosis or I have this disease or whatever it is. Yeah. Ask why. Yeah. And don't don't just stop there. You got to keep asking why, and keep asking why, and keep yeah. asking why, and find your people who are going to help you dig for the reason why. Understand the root cause, yeah. because once you get as deep as you can, and I'm talking like, you know, microbes and mycotoxins and exposures in in the air and electromagnetic frequencies and so many of these things, you know, that are that mess with our biochemistry, our biomechanics, um, you know, the, the amazing, I talk about this a lot, but the amazing amount of endocrine, endocrine disruptors that we have in our world that totally throw off our hormones, which throw off everything else. Um, you know, our hormones are communicators, right? They're little communicators in the body. And when they go wonky, everything goes wonky. Yep. And so being aware of what, you know, simple as it is, being aware of what's in your environment, what you're putting on your skin, what you're washing your hair with, what you're putting under your arms, what are you washing your clothes, you know, and so many of these things, they seem so small, but we do them day in and day out, all day long, yep. and there's this constant exposure, and it creates big problems. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're exposed to more toxins yeah. than we've ever been exposed to as a human race in the yeah. history non of our species. Toxins. Yeah. Right. One hundred percent. You know, we're <laughs> yeah. starting to kind of figure out what what impact glyphosate has on our mm -hmm. gut, and you know how that might be related to autism. And like, there's there's so mm -hmm. much out there that, yep. um, you know, I think I think it's just so important to ask that why, mm -hmm. um, and we we want to be there for people, mm -hmm. but they also have to want to be there for oh, themselves. Yeah. For sure. You know, and in a conversation yeah. that we personally have in our office every single day, we have a new person is. If the only thing you change about your life is that you add chiropractic, don't expect miracles. Mm -hmm. But what happens is when people add chiropractic and they start down this road yeah. of natural mm -hmm. remedies, mm -hmm. then they are they show up better for their own life. It opens up more doors. Yeah. And it opens up the understanding that there's more that can be done. Yeah, we know. don't we don't realize what what uh, what pain does to our brain. Oh man! You know, once yeah. you once you get out of pain, mm -hmm. 
it changes everything. Mm -hmm. It changes how you show up. It changes your energy yeah. levels. It changes your sleep. Yeah. It changes everything. It, it, it changes your personality. Totally. So yeah, constant pain, and I and I, I, I don't think we talked about this. My husband broke his leg, yep. and so he was in co chronic pain for a couple of years, and changed his personality. He's just like, I'm just not a happy. He's a happy yep. dude, yep. you know, just not a happy person. And it's amazing when you can move out of that, yep. um, it you know get back to where you were. But you know, think about that if you're in chronic pain. Yeah. You know how it it affects you, but it also affects everybody else around you. Yeah. So we, we talk about uh, I call them the aspiration layers of healing. Mm -hmm. That's that's uncoined. So I'm sure uh, we'll we'll talk about that. But um, it starts off with pain relief mm -hmm. because when people come to our office, they have some type of symptom that they're experiencing: mm -hmm. digestive issues, mm -hmm. headaches, low back pain, anxiety, whatever it is. But the first sequence of events is we get them out of pain, mm -hmm. or we help their body right. express itself so that it gets itself out of pain, yeah. right? Um, and when that happens, that opens up a new door, like we're talking about, as they become a different person. But then mm -hmm. the second step is, now we're talking about improving their function. You talked about yeah. biomechanics earlier, but we take a squat video of people out on day one. Nice. And we're like, okay, we got some work to do, right? Mm -hmm. Like. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, this hip's going this way, and this hip's going this way, and you know, you're having to lift your heels up off the ground to drop down into a squat, da 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 da, da. But as we progress them through care and we take them through progress exams, re-exams, we, we redo the squat, and then we do it again at the end of their care. And so I'm not teaching them how yeah. to squat. Mm -hmm. I'm not teaching them how. Right. You know, but their body is relearning yeah. the skill mm -hmm. of how to squat. Yeah. So that as they work through this process, they go from pain relief to an improvement in their function, mm -hmm. which that function could be sleep, could be their posture, mm -hmm. could be squat, could be the way that they walk, anything under the sun. Then after that, after we've improved their function and they've they've got themselves out of pain, now we talk about improvement in their life expression. Yeah. So that's how they show up. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're not dealing with pain and you're more functional, maybe in this beautiful uh, you know, environment of Colorado, they want to go for a hike. Mm -hmm. But when they're in pain and they're they don't feel like they can move without being in yeah. pain, they're not gonna go you for a hike. Sit on the couch. They're not gonna mm -hmm. do anything that lights them up and, and yeah. brings excitement and joy and passion and, and all these things into their lives because they just don't feel like it. We right. hear that all the freaking yeah. time. Yeah. Well, I, you know, my, my recommendation is you'll go for a walk. I don't feel like it. Or uh, I don't know if I can. When yeah. was the last time I went for mm -hmm. a walk? It's like, well, maybe you should try. Mm -hmm. Maybe you should try. Maybe you should start using this body that God gave you. Now that we're starting to get it yep. more dialed in, and it's 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 a, you know improving its function mm -hmm. so much, you start showing up better for yourself. Yeah. And I think that's that's life. That's what we have to be shown away. We have to be uh, taken out of this model of giving away all your power, and instead choosing self empowerment. Yeah. And Without that's that's our goal. That's our yeah. goal with every person mm -hmm. that walks in the door is that we want them to leave knowing. Damn, I made the right fucking mm -hmm. choice to go yeah. into that place. Yeah, and I it's it's interesting that you say that because I, I I I I hear this, I see it a lot in practice where people come to you, come to me, I'm sure, and, and come to you, and you can you can see, you can feel that they're they feel powerless. Yep. They're like, I don't know what's going on. This is what I'm told, and I don't know how to fix it, and I'm not sure what to do, and conventional whatever says this and that. And I'm not getting any answers. I'm not getting any relief. Yep. And they are very disempowered. And just like you said, it is a matter of saying, okay, we got this. Yep. You take your power back. Yep. This is what this is about. Is you taking your power back. And the cool thing is that, you know, I've seen more uh, medical doctors come through our office mm -hmm. recently. Mm -hmm. um, and that's an interesting conversation because mm -hmm. a lot of them are just overtly curious. Mm -hmm. They want to know like what the hype's about. Like they, they talk to this person, maybe it's a patient of theirs that they had mm -hmm. in the office that's suffering under yeah. medicine that said, well, I got myself out of back pain. Well, how'd you do it? I went to a chiropractor and they showed me how to care for a little bit better for my spine. And they're like, huh, wonder why, why, I, why mm -hmm. I wasn't taught that. I wonder yeah. why that information wasn't made, made available to me and then they come in, and then we have to start the same process. Mm -hmm. Did you know that your body heals itself? Did you know that all we have to do is create the right space for yeah. your nervous system, brain-to-body yeah. connection to improve mm -hmm. so that you know you can get back to feeling the way that you want to live? 
And so I give those people a ton of credit. Oh, yeah. Uh, because not only, like, I think a lot of it, this goes back to our very first part of this conversation is higher education doesn't always give you all the information you need to make an yeah. informed choice. Yeah. It's more so just giving you information that you can regurgitate to somebody mm -hmm. later. Mm -hmm. And as we start to wake up to that fact, we do start to see more medical doctors in because they're like, you know what? I'm kind of noticing a trend here. I am waking up a little bit. I'm noticing a trend over the last couple of years that, you know, this system isn't designed for people's health. This, this is designed to keep people sick mm -hmm. for as long a, a period of time as possible so that we can keep selling the yeah. pills that eventually turns into the surgeries and all this other stuff that mm -hmm. lines the pockets of somebody that ain't me. Yeah. Uh, because if, if I tell you that you could spend 1500 bucks over six months and feel fucking amazing, mm -hmm. doesn't that sound a lot better than, well, we got to take you through this x-ray or this MRI or, you know, we got to discuss having this surgery, but... But beforehand, we're going to see how well you respond to this pill. That's a $20,000 pill pill. Easily. Kind of stuff. Easily. I mean, that's the thing, too, is is it's so, it's just gotten so out of control. And, you know, I I love this country. I love so much of what we're about. But so many of, especially with our health care, has, has really gotten out of control. Yep. But what we are seeing, which is exactly what you're talking about, is this movement. We're seeing the movement toward... Um, understanding functional health care, yep. right? Functional being functional chiropractic, you know, chiropractic is functional. Yep. Functional medicine is understanding the body, the organ systems, how it's all connected, yep. how to feed it, um, what, you know, the input, yep. right? Um, and, and, and understanding and learning how to dig for the root cause. And you have, you have a movement of the conventional moving into the what is, you know, we call it non-conventional, but it is, it is more traditional, it's right. more natural. Yeah, more nas natural. Yeah. National. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We need to become more natural on a national basis. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and I, you know, I think the, the one of the reasons that it has taken the turn that it has is because America is free. Mm -hmm. There is so mm -hmm. much freedom yeah. to build a, any business that you want. Mm -hmm. Well, it's just turned into these companies have realized that they can make a shitload of money yeah. off of our backs. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's time for us to take our power back. You know, yeah. my wife and I, uh, our goal is to start a regenerative farm. I love that. We want we want to take our own food power back. Mm -hmm. We want to mm -hmm. create a space where people feel comfortable to come to us, knowing that we're giving them organic produce, yep. uh, knowing that we can educate them on maybe how to set up a, a garden in their own backyard, mm -hmm. have some have you know yep. five six chickens where they're getting a dozen eggs every couple of days. You mm -hmm. know that all that shit is so yep. powerful, yep. but. We're told that, no, you can't do that. You live in the city. What are you thinking? Well, okay, then apparently I need to move out of the city. Yeah. Because, you know, there's certain ordinances and, mm -hmm. you know, fees and fines and all this stuff because there's yeah. a reason that you there there are those things that are present. Right. Because that gives you too much power, mm -hmm. personal sovereign power, and that's not uh, in alignment with the people that right. expect us to pay them for those things. Like, I don't want to pay $7 for... Uh, you know, free range organic eggs at the grocery store. I don't want to fucking do that. Mm -hmm. You know, I can I, know. I can feed six mm -hmm. chicken six chickens a day on that. Mm -hmm. You know, even mm -hmm. more than that. Yeah. You know, and so it, it's it's allowing us to like show up better f in our own lives, mm -hmm. show up better for our kids' yeah. lives, show up better for our community's lives. You know, and as we start this process of of taking our power back, the f the possibilities are endless mm -hmm. of what of what this country could look like if yep. we all. Take responsibility, accountability for how we show mm -hmm. up, and mm -hmm. and do it in a powerful way. Yeah, take accountability for yourself. Don't depend on anybody else. Yep, that's the key. Yep, it's at least one of the few keys. Um, so I I want to introduce you to Sherry Hess. You will love her. She was on the show a couple of weeks ago. I've had her on a couple of times. Cool. Um, she is all about taste and regenerative, like taste and um and nutrient density. Yeah. Really cool stuff, but also regenerative farming. Yep. You'll, you'll Sweet. Like a lot, so. My wife will love that. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll introduce y'all. Um, real quick, we're running over just a little bit, but I want to know, I want everybody to know how to find you, how to ask you questions, yeah. how to get in touch with you yep. and the source and all of the things. Yep. So um, an easy way to, to hit me is on Instagram uh, at Dr. Zach Jeskinia. Uh, so at Dr. Zach Jeskinia. Um, you can email me uh, with the same same email at gmail.com, drzachjuskinia at gmail.com. I'm on Facebook, Zach Jeskinia DC. Um, 
you know, come into the Source Chiropractic, 4346 Alcott Street, Denver, Colorado, 80211, um, 303-993-5769. We're there. We show up for people every single day in the best possible way that we can, knowing that it's our responsibility to do that, to show up for yeah. them, mm -hmm. to teach them or reteach them the, the uh, ability to take their own responsibility, yeah. to take their own power back. Themselves. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, fun. it was fun. Yeah. We'll do it again. We got a lot of fun stuff to talk about. Yep. So, um, thank you. Uh, you can all, of course, find me at We uh, We're always streaming live here at 10 a.m. Mountain Time on KUHSDenver.com. We are, of course, the Taste Life Nutrition Podcast after that. You can always find us on YouTube and all of the places. Um, make sure if you want to reach out to me, you can go to the website and fill out a, an, an assessment that comes directly to me, and I'll reach out to you, and we'll chat a little bit about what you need. Um, Soulful Conception has launched. So Soulful Conception is all about preconception planning, preparing your body to, to be healthy so you can have that healthy body, healthy pregnancy, and that healthy baby, and have an impact on generations to come. It's huge. This is where you have the power. We have the power as individuals to to create a healthier future, um, and it's it's a really beautiful thing. So I love it. Uh, yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah. So anyway, thanks. We'll see y'all next week. Have a good weekend. Bye guys. Bye.